part two of our interview with cognitive anthropologist and founder of Brain-Cells.com, Dr. Bob Deutsch. Now back to our host, Kevin Kelly, on the Buzz Bubble. I don't think brand is what it's usually defined as, which is name recognition plus positive attributes associated with right, name right. recognition. That's not how the mind works. The mind works this way. Um, if it's going to build an, a, a relationship with you, an emotional attachment, it has to take, if you will, its own story about itself, mm -hmm. its story of you, and metaphorically merge them into one story. Then you have what you could call a spasm of emotion. It takes no logic, it takes no attributes, it takes no analytic process whatsoever. It's bang. Feels right. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah, with me. You know? And once that happens, then you could get a lot of what you could call rationalization, analytic rationalization. Yeah, yeah. It was a good price, it was this, it was that. But that's not what drives the, the, right, right. the attachment. No, I agree that it takes much more courage to create that relationship than, you know, for years advertising was mine, not theirs. You know, I, yes. I'm better than the competition. Well, push that aside. Let's just, let's just me and you get to know each other. And the, the brands that really have, you know, the Apples of the world, the Harley Davidsons of the world, have, they've got that relationship with their people. Yeah, if you, if you hear, I've, I've done some work for Apple and Harley Davidson. Um, Harley Davidson's an interesting story because I think it really gives us some insight to brand attachment in general. Uh, I went around the country talking to people, uh, Hell's Angels. Okay. Okay. So, okay, what's so great about Harley Davidson? Um, and they tell you uh, some very interesting things. Um, but it comes down to one simple idea. I, I have a feeling, these Hells Angels feel, that um, the world thwarts them, okay? <laughs> right. And this vehicle, this love of their life, this Harley Davidson, takes them to a place that they are not thwarted in. Sure. And that's what brand does in general. Right, right. Well, the luxury, the, 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 the best brands. The be yeah. Well, yeah. there is no, if, if you're a brand, you're a great brand. You can't be a mediocre brand because brand assumes that emotional attachment. You know, it's like many years ago, I was doing a little work, um, 1984, uh, on the presidential campaign, Reagan. Okay. So I was speaking to a woman and she was saying, she was referring to um, Reagan's invasion of Grenada, okay? But she didn't remember what that was. But she mm. said to me, um, I like the way President Reagan handled that conflict. I forgot which one. <laughs> now that's a great example of brand. <laughs> right. Right? You don't need it's any secondary. facts. You don't need any data. You don't need any, any, any logic. It's, it's just an emotional connection. That works for me. You know? That was a and great campaign. I mean, was that the Hal Reine Morning in America? Yes. Oh. Yeah. 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 That was the Tuesday, so-called Tuesday team. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Phil Dusenberry. Great people. Um, Apple is also, I think, a great example of, of a great brand. And listening to people talk about Apple has taught me something, which is when brand happens, let's call it, um, people leave the world of prose and talk in poetry. Okay, for example, <laughs> okay, here's a example. quote. Here's a, this is literally a quote. Um, person talking about the iPhone, okay? The iPhone is a circle. All other phones and, and providers are squares. <laughs> the iPhone is smooth, it glides, it takes me where I want to go and need to go. All other phones and providers are rectangular, um, have right angles, are too bureaucratic, too corporate, and they don't know anything about me. <laughs> wow. So when you're talking about 
this phone is a circle and all other phones are a square, you're into the world of brand. Brand relationship. Right. Wow. Let's talk a little bit about social tribes, which I think is a good, uh, you know, you're either in, you're out. Um, yeah, I think, of course, there's a lot of talk nowadays about social networks. Right, right. Rightly so. But social networks, I think, uh, give people a venue to, to express their opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't think social networks are that great to uh, get people to um, convert mm -hmm. to you okay. or activate in the name of you. Okay? And that's really what we want. So I, there's another sort of aspect to social, and it's not networks, but it's tribes. Tribes are, uh, are very active. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to have a tribe, you need a number of things. Um, first of all, you need a, a boundary. Okay. Um, this is my identity. Outside it is the other. Okay. And it's not necessarily a velvet rope boundary all the time, is it? Or is no. it? Okay. No. Okay. No. Um, you, and once you have a sense of tribal belonging, belonging to, an, in a sense, an ideology, right? Um, that's both going to help you feel like you belong and help you feel more of your own individuality. It's both. It's right, that paradox. Right, right. You know? um, once that happens, you get, um, you get a, new, a language of, of the tribe. You know, look at Starbucks versus Dunkin' Donuts. Very different group okay? of people. Um, <laughs> one gives you a cup of coffee. You know, a barrister gives you a special cup of coffee. A vente um, um, There's, there's, there's really a whole different conception, not only of the, of the products offered, but there's a different conception of what life is, um, what I'm up to as a person. Yeah. Beyond just getting a coffee or a donut or whatever. So I think there's not enough thought by companies about how to create a tribal experience, a membership experience, right. as opposed to just a network experience of I could express what I like. Yeah, we preach very often, we preach the movement of the brand, movement of the consumer through the brand. And sorry, I'm going to, by habit, continue to say consumer. But the idea of you know, you create this relationship. That's great. Well, what, what's next after that? And you create a loyalty. And then the real goal is when they're inside that circle and now they've got to tell everybody else, you don't use Starbucks, you're an idiot. You know, they, 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 right. they're preaching right. for you. And that's where we, you know, then, then if they can influence their network. I, I agree with you on that respect. But loyalty is a separate issue, I think. Hmm. I, I think we're a little misguided as an industry too to talk about loyalty. Okay. When you really have profound loyalty, yeah. it's not the person being loyal to the product. Is it's the, pro the person using the product as a venue for its own self-expansion -expans such that it's really loyalty to self. Okay. It's a subtle distinction, but I think it's critical. Critical. I use you because you help me become more of myself. That's brand. Anything else is not brand. And you think that's the lifetime loyalty, the Apples, the Harleys, the, you know, not the, boy, I really like my Nissan, but my next car may not be a Nissan. Right, you well, know, that's, that yeah. Yeah. Yeah, liking is not brand necessarily. Right, right. Right. That's it for part two of our interview with Dr. Bob Deutsch. Tune in next week for part three. We have the notion of brand, let's say within, within the lifespan of the advertising industry, so let's say 50 odd years, okay? Um, but if you look at brand the way I look at it as attachment, the processes of attachment have been with us since time immemorial, <laughs> millions of years literally millions. Attachment is, is not a marketing concept. 
Attachment is nothing less than the engine of history. Next week on the Buzz Bubble.